Hello everybody, SoCal Thero here, walking back to another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, in this video, we are going to be, there's actually a few things that are going to be a little different in this video, but uh, in this video, it's part of my trip around the world, and I'm going to fly leg two, which is from uh, El Paso, Texas to, starts with an M, let me see if I can find it over here real quick. There it is. Or sorry, the the airport code starts with an M. It's a uh, M M I O. It's a uh, Saltello, I believe is how that's pronounced. Don't hold me to it. It's a uh, it's a name that I'm not going to be able to pronounce correctly. So I'll try to do the best I can here. So uh, yeah, that's going to be this leg, and that flight was two hours and thirty minutes roughly. I had a game crash, unfortunately, at the end of this flight when uh, I was going to taxi in so it is what it is but basically I wanted to take the time to do something a little different for you guys um, for the 5k video uh, my lighting setup is not the best right now so I unfortunately won't have a face cam on doing this but I am going to do something different so as you can see I'm starting to take off right now I'm watching the video of my recording. I didn't record any audio. I was the only one here for the flight. Uh, all of my buddies were pretty busy on the Saturday that I did this flight. So I just did it on my own basically. And I wanted to do something different. So I'm actually watching the video while recording. So I'm not having to focus on flying right now. I'm, uh, I'm just watching it with you guys basically as I'm talking here. But wanted to do something different for the 5k special so i'm going to be doing it in a microsoft flight simulator video um if you recall in the past i did do uh, i think it was a 1k maybe 2k video where i was playing american truck sim so i figured i'd change it up and do something different i was gonna do oh don't sink <laughs> I was going to do something in American Truck Simulator. A buddy of mine from my Discord, his name is Zach, or he goes by Crappy Lens. <laughs> this is an interesting name, but uh, he recently made a uh, Tesla uh, mod for American Truck Simulator. And I was going to drive that instead, but unfortunately, I just couldn't get my game to cooperate. So I decided to do it with Microsoft Flight Simulator instead. So, if you are on my channel and you see my community page, I reached out and said, hey, I'll, I'll take your questions. I'll answer some of them. Um, I don't think I came across anything that was like offensive or something I wouldn't talk about. So, I didn't, I didn't see anything that I said I wouldn't answer. Um, there was some that was a uh, message to me on Twitter that I'm going to use for as well, which it looks like some of those were just kind of the, taken straight out of uh out of the post that i made so let's go ahead and get started here uh here's one from twitter um the user's name's got a scratch i i can't tell what that is it's i want to say it's russian i can't sorry I, I can't tell what it is but all of you guys only asked me one question so if you ask the question and you remember what you asked, it's going to be your question. I didn't get multiple uh, people asking the same question. Uh, but the first one is, again, from a name that's in Russian. I don't know it. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I do apologize. Uh, they ask, what is your favorite type of food? Which is something I listed as an example. Um, my favorite type of food is sushi. I, uh, I absolutely love going out and eating some sushi. Um, there's a place near my house, right down the street. I've been going there for a little over 10 years now, and they make a really good sushi there, so I enjoy going there. There's another place that's the other direction that's nearby to my house, too, that's okay. But uh, it doesn't compete to my place that I like to go to. Alright, second question is from somebody named Terry Z on Twitter. And they wrote, oh, what is your favorite color? Again, somebody else that just took one of my examples off of the uh, community post there. So, their question is, 
What is your favorite color? Uh, when I was a kid, my favorite color was red. Uh, as I got older, I found myself uh, liking green more, like a uh, uh, like a dark green, like a deep forest green is uh, my favorite color. And let's see here. We'll grab one from the YouTube comments. So this one is from that one guy, which <laughs> this guy already knows the answer because I know who this is. This is a buddy of mine that I know uh, face to face. His name is that one guy, but his name is Rocky. And he says, has anyone ever said you look like a famous boxing trainer? <laughs> so he's actually got two questions. And then the second question is also what advice would you give to someone who was interested in possibly streaming games like yourself or possibly podcasting so for the first one he already knows this answer because it's a running joke within my friends um i'll throw a picture on the video so you can see it so i'll block out microsoft flight simulator a little bit and i can see the resemblance even though there's no relationship but yes um he knows already but a lot of people has said with my older glasses that I used to wear that are a lot smaller. Um, I looked a, very much like um, uh, Freddie Roach, who, if you don't know who that is, that's uh, Manny Pacquiao's old uh, boxing trainer. And I'll have a picture up there so you guys can look and laugh at the uh, <laughs> two pictures. I'm just picturing it right now going, oh, my God. Um, but he already knew the answer. He just did that just to be, <laughs> just to be funny. He just <laughs> threw that in there. But, uh, what advice, the second question he had is, uh, what, what advice would you give to someone who's interested in possibly streaming games like yourself or possibly podcasting? So I could give you, I, I mean, I'm no one, I'm no one to talk. I only have 5,000 subscribers. I mean, that's a lot for me. Like I'm. I never thought I'd have this many, um, but it's just, yeah. Um, well, actually, you know what? Before I answer, I hate to, I hate to do this. I hate to break off into this, but it kind of goes hand in hand with the question. So, first off, big huge thanks, shout out to he already knows who he is. I do it every time I, I had one of these in the past, but. The only reason you guys know about me is my uh, buddy Jeff Faviano, who you guys watch. Although, you, when we got to 5,000, a lot of people were trickling in from Police Simulator, um, a video I did with my buddy Jason. So I don't know if you all know who he is, but if you don't, you really need to go check out his channel. Because, I mean, one, he does this for a living. He's more professional than me. He knows a lot more about what he's doing, but my channel wouldn't be where it's at today without the huge help from him. Um, he's helped with uh, mentioning my name. He's helped with uh, with my setup, basically, so that I sound better. He's helped with the settings. He's helped with uh, telling people about me to get me exposed. Like it, this channel would not be where it's at today if it wasn't for Jeff and. In Jeff's earlier videos where he does something similar like this, he's just, he flat out says the person that he has to thank and is inspired by is uh, Bay Area Bugs, which I'm sure most of you guys know who that is. If you don't, you lived under a rock, but uh, Bay Area Bugs pretty much paved the path for him. So it's kind of how I feel like the Bugs got him his to the path and the journey he's on today and getting started. And he kind of did the same, not kind of, he did do the same for me as well. So I'll be forever grateful for that. Um, to go back to the, ooh, a little bit of stuttering on my screen here. Uh, to go back to the uh, advice I would give, uh, let's see. Don't sell yourself short on what you're doing. And don't ever, God, how do you explain this? without being an asshole. <laughs> uh, don't sell yourself short and don't ever feel like you should just give up because you don't see anything in the return. I personally do recording and the narration. Like the when people ask me what my channel is about, when they run into me, I go, it's me playing video games with narration over it. So it's basically me narrating what I'm doing. It's the best way I can describe it, but what I tell people all the time is like, I, 
this isn't a job for me. This isn't like my escape to like a different life or anything like that. I do this for fun. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy playing video games, which I already did anyways. I enjoy helping other people. I enjoy socializing with other people as, uh, as introvert and as shy as I can be. I do enjoy socializing with people I know very well. So something like this, I never looked at it as like, well, I need to get to this so I can make this amount of money and I can be this famous and this. I never look at it as that. I just enjoy doing it. So you need to go into it with that mindset. If you're going into the mindset of I need to have X amount of people in X amount of time because I need to make X amount of money or I'm going to quit, you're never going to do it. It's not going to work. You just got to I've been doing this for fun for seven years and I'm just now cresting the well has it been seven years it probably has to be honest 14, 18, 19, 20, 24. It, it's seven years next year so it's actually six years and I didn't really take it serious and my start was not that what I should have done at the beginning, if you guys have been here long enough, you knew that I had a schedule. It was simple. It was three days a week. I would upload something. If you've been here long enough, you've and or you've been here recently, you've noticed I've put out a video pretty much five days a week now. I take weekends off. I don't want to put content out Saturday because a lot of people can't catch stuff during the week and they'll save it till Saturday. So I like to leave that open so people can catch up. And then Sunday, as you may have heard in my American Truck Simulator video, I um, become a very religious person uh, after a, a traumatic life changing event in my life um, in 2020. So I try to like, I try to leave. I, I don't even do like for my day job that pays my bills and everything. I try not to work on that day on Sundays, regardless. Like I'm scheduled off that day, but like, for an example, the Sunday previous to this recording, or, or this audio recording, but the t day after the d uh, the next day after recording this flight sim, I um, had to go to work, but I made sure that I went to church first because I have a schedule and I like to keep. And typically, I won't go to work on a Sunday, but I made the exception because I knew it wasn't going to be long, and it was just to uh, help out with. Uh, overall corporate structure so i didn't mind helping out but as long as it didn't interfere with uh church services that day um so advice i would give is put yourself to a schedule set your goals have two sets of or have multiple sets of goals i should say not just two i don't want to limit you to two so everybody says like well what's your goal and i say well i'd love to see ten thousand subscribers that is not my initial goal I came out with. When I first started recording, my initial goal was, let's see if I can get, I'm gonna record 10 videos of LSPDFR, 10 videos of American Truck Simulator, or it was five, something like that. And I forget what I recorded back then. I, it might've been Wreckfest, it might've been something else that I started recording uh, at the beginning too. Or maybe it was even Battlefield when I was playing on Xbox. But um, I just I set myself small goals. I was like, okay, I have two subscribers right now. One of them was an alternate account of mine. So, and then the other one was um, a family member that just happened to subscribe. I was like, okay, if I could get to ten before these are all used up, let's keep going. Then I got to ten, and I still had like four or five videos left. And I was like, okay, cool. This is showing some promise. And if you go to my first LSPFR videos or any of my videos, you'll see like it took a while for me to progress and do a lot better than I than I am with my audio. Again, thanks to Jeff Fabiano for that. Uh, my thumbnails or screenshots was again thanks to Jeff Fabiano for that because he, I spent when we were doing five PD like I'd spent a few hours with him where he just kind of coached me on like things he saw that I could do to improve, and that's been a night and day difference with the intention my channel has gotten with his coaching and not everybody will accept or take constructive criticism as that they'll just take it as criticism and i took his suggestions and the things he saw that i can improve upon and i've been trying to better myself in those ways and i've noticed a, a little bit of a return on it so 
one of those things like it, it helps a lot so like again advice wise if you know somebody and you could talk to somebody that does it professionally or has been doing it for a while that can give you more advice like i've been doing it for a while but i i'm always learning but if you have the opportunity to talk to them try and learn as much as you can sitting down and talking to them about it like i said jeff taught me a lot and it's not just because i asked him it was because he he told me he's like these are things i'm seeing i would i'd like to share with you and i was totally open to it and he it was great just getting the feedback and learning all the different things that i could be doing differently to uh, make my channel grow so advice wise don't set yourself too high of goals. Set yourself miniature goals to get to your overall goal and just keep working at it. Um, it it's hard work. Let me tell you, like I try to bring you guys five videos. I pre-record and it's still it's still tough. I used to stress and kill myself on like a weekend with like 20 or 30. Uh, oh, I got discord chirping off at me right now. <laughs> uh, I, I'll just I'll be killing myself with that stuff and I, I finally got myself to a point to where I was like, I can't do this anymore. I got to hold myself to a schedule. So another piece of advice, put yourself to a schedule with your recording and playing. If you do want to do this, like I had three days a week that I would do it. I wanted to move it to five. So that way there was more content, more exposure. So I started doing it five days a week and it, it's being on a schedule has helped me tremendously as well with, um, overall balance of quality of life and uh providing content that i want to do and uh meeting my goals for my schedules for my scheduled content so that was that would be the advice I, i'd give uh anybody that wants to do this um go into it with the mindset that you're doing it for fun not not for the mindset to get rich and famous because if that's the mindset you're gonna fail because it's just it's not gonna happen you're gonna want something too bad and you're gonna let it go because you're gonna want it just too badly just go it, like if you're looking at this as a career would not do it would not look at it that way because you're not gonna go anywhere with it some people do some people look at it and they get it and they're just they have that mindset me personally just my own personal experience i look at this as doing something fun and that I enjoy doing and I enjoy sharing with other people and luckily other people want to see it as well. Um, let's see. Next one is from Hunter Curry, which Hunter is awesome. He comments on every single video I have out there, even if it's just a quick like, hey, awesome video, Thero, anything like that. Always appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much for that. Um, his question is when you played ats on the channel what has been your most favorite truck that you drove so the video that i was going to originally do for this series was going to be my most favorite truck to drive and it gets so much hate because of what it is but it, i just i enjoy it and i miss the mod so much i'm so thankful my buddy brought back the mod and brought it back to life again with the newer updates of ats but my favorite truck to drive in american truck simulator <laughs> I know people are going to click off as soon as they hear this, but it's going to be the Tesla truck, the Tesla mod, the Tesla semi truck mod. I enjoyed it when it was uh, way updates back when it was around. It was a lot of fun to drive. It was relaxing. I would just I'd hop in the truck. I'd grab a trailer and be driving down the road when it's like cloudy or rainy or overcast or whatever and just chilling and real like just really relaxing and enjoying myself it was a lot of fun to drive it had so much power so like if i felt like i wanted to end a run early i just had to put my foot into it and it would get up and go it was such a cool truck to drive it's not saying i don't like traditional trucks too like i love the w900 that truck is amazing um i love the freightliner cascadia um, I like the Mac Anthem. In fact, if I didn't have the Tesla mod, my favorite truck would be the Mac Anthem. That is that I would say they're in a tie. The the Tesla and the Mac Anthem. The Tesla more just because of how unique and cool it is. But the, if I had like a and I say traditional, even though this thing comes in an automatic and that's not really traditional. And that could be an argument between truck drivers, but the Mac Anthem would be my uh, would be up there with the Tesla. They they would be tied for a uh, truck that I like. 
Uh, let's see here. Next question comes from Twitter. And again, it seems like all the Twitter guys just took, um, just took my, uh, <laughs> they just took my examples and pretty much applied them to their selves. Uh, this one comes from a Jerry, I won't even attempt your last name, man. I'm sorry. That's a, that's not a name I could pronounce with my tongue. Sorry. <laughs> It says, uh, what do I do for work? I work for a printing company that prints materials for a bunch of different um, customers, like companies basically that hire us. It's a very big uh, Fortune 500 company. They do print fulfillment, they do digital print, they do um, black and white print, they do everything. Like. A, Best example I could give is like one day I'll be shipping out owner's manuals for Chevy Silverados that are going to the uh, assembly plant where they throw them in the, the, the glove box of each new Chevy Silverado that they build. And then the next day I'll be shipping out posters that Jack in the Box is doing for uh, two taco special or something or um the Laker promos when like if they hold the opposing team under a hundred, it's like free tacos for everybody in attendance or whatever. The uh, at taco or yeah, Jack in the Box, so like stuff like that. So I work for that company. I am a supervisor for the warehouse department. Um, I've been working there technically seven years because i slipped away for two years to work for their financial company who eventually closed and then they brought me back to this um this company which i originally started at but i physically have been there for nine years now it'll be 10 years next year that i'll uh, be celebrating my 10th year with the company so that pays the bills i'm very fortunate it's a monday through friday job i work as very easy schedule it's 8 to 4 30 so there's a good quality of balance of life um unless i got appointments and stuff i gotta make arrangements around it for like dentists and doctors and whatnot but um i'm very fortunate to have it because like i have two shifts for uh people that pull orders that report to me there's a morning shift and a second shift and i know what it's like being on both of them i i didn't get the supervisor position when i started when i started there i was a packer that packed orders I worked on both shifts like I said first and second and I was a puller that drove a uh, forklift a uh, Raymond order picker if for those of you that want to google that to see what they are and I would go up in the air about 20 to 30 feet to uh, pull boxes down to uh, ship out to customers um, let's see I was a puller a packer I was the lead of the warehouse so I reported to um, the supervisor and basically um he told me what to do and i would uh just basically go do it and then i would like manage the team on the floor just like making sure like if they had questions they can have me to ask instead of the uh supervisor unless i wasn't available it kind of freed up the supervisor more than anything i guess you could say assistant supervisor more than anything and then i was a customer service rep i worked in the office for only a few months i didn't do that for too long i got bored um, because it was really, it was really easy. I would get, I'd like sit at my desk at seven and I, it was like office space. I'd stare off into the abyss for an hour or two and then my reports would print out and I'd spend like 30 minutes doing that and I'd be done. And then I'd stare off in the abyss again and then it was lunchtime and then I'd stare off in the abyss again and then the reports would print out and then I'd finish up for the day and go home. Like it wasn't that hard. And it was during our peak too. I don't know if I just didn't get the good accounts that were keeping us busy or, or what, but it, it seemed, it was just, I couldn't, I couldn't stand it. Cause you sit at a desk all day, five days a week. Couldn't do it six days. Sometimes if we're busy, couldn't do it. So when they opened up a, the warehouse supervisor position, I took that one instead. Just couldn't, couldn't do it anymore. And. I mean, this one, I have a desk and I am at my desk the majority of the time, but I have the freedom to get up and go do other tasks, fill in where I need to fill in to help out if I got somebody out sick or took the day off and whatnot. I have more freedom to get up and walk around instead of being planted at a desk looking at two computer screens all day. So that's what I do for, uh, 
that's what pays my bills, basically. All right, next one, we'll take this uh, Twitter one because I only have one more Twitter one to go. Uh, next one is, let's see here. It is. It's from Samantha K. It says, what do you think of game? And I put XYZ in my example, but they just filled it in with the game. Um, the zombie game that has been delayed. Zombie game that's been delayed. I forget the name of it, but it looks like Tom Clancy's division game. Oh, you're talking about, oh, you're talking about, um, actually, I don't even know what the name of the game is right now. Cause it's, uh, it's held up because of some sort of like copyright infringement or something with the title of the game. I think it was, um, oh God, what is that called now? I'm trying to think of it. Um, hmm can't think of it i'll put it on the screen though and then you guys can know what i think about it but uh so what do i think of that game from all the things i've seen of the game it looks absolutely awesome it looks great looks incredible if you talk me and my buddy paul that you guys hear on my channel all the time that we play video games with he's an ocrp as well um we talk in dms before about like oh my god check out this game this and that like he showed it to me and i had already known about it um through big fry tv and watching it through there but um i just <laughs> i saw it and i was like man this game looks really cool it almost looks too good to be true and that is kind of where that's at so what what can i say about oh that's it the day before that is what it's called the day before um and this isn't just from watching Big Fry TV. If you watch his channel, you'll kind of, and you've seen a few of his videos, you'll know where I'm coming from this. But seeing all of it, it looks too good to be true. Like there's, I, I don't know. You just, you look at it and you go, it's great that there's, you could do all these different things, but like it keeps getting delayed. They don't talk much about like how many players can be in the server. They don't talk much about what kind of recommended settings you're going to need. They say that the game is being developed by like-minded people that it sounds like work for no pay at all. I, I don't know how that works. Like I, I cannot see people just working for free out of the passion and love of a specific genre of a video game. If they are, that is amazing and cool. Don't get me wrong, but it's kind of hard to picture that as a thing. Uh, so like to me it, it sounds too good to be true and then like this latest snap foo on the delay being because there's like a trademark like copyright infringement to the name of it the day before that is very suspicious to me i don't know one i don't know how a pub a, a game developer doesn't seek copyright on something like that to make or like seek an attorney to make sure you're not going to be infringed on copyright laws for it and two, why don't you just change the name of the game? I, I don't get it. I mean, yeah, that's the name of the game. But if you change the name and you pu push it out there, like, hey, we're changing the name because of this. This is what it's going to be called now. There's a bunch of different names you could use for a, z a zombie open world game. I mean, hell, Stated Decay is one of my favorite games. And in fact, that wasn't a question, but I guess I just answered it in case somebody did wanted to know. Like, State of Decay is an open world zombie game. Very much like this game, but this game is like promising graphics and like different gameplay and like to the moon with stuff, basically. And they have not had any problems with their game and they were just an indie developer. I found State of Decay on Xbox on the marketplace as a demo because somebody was having a sale on indie games and it was like it was just a, a i don't know the proper term i think it's triple a title like it's not it's not a big brand like somebody under activision or ea games or anything like that they were just like a small little studio that is like grown into what they are today and being actually owned by uh their studio being owned by the microsoft team that just shows you how um how dedicated they are and how much uh, Microsoft 
thinks of them as far as uh, the work they do. So going back to this game, though, I, I'm kind of trying not to get too excited for it because everything looks great. But again, it's like one of those is too good to be trues. Like you'll just it looks great. And then all of a sudden you get the game and it's totally not what you thought it was. So I've learned to manage my hopes and my expectations uh, being as old as I am for a video game anyways that uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna reserve judgment until I see and learn more about it oh man oh I ain't even gonna say the name because this is a stupid well I shouldn't say that this is a ridiculous question it says when do you think GTA 6 is coming out honestly I have no idea I don't know I know nothing I about GTA 6 I don't know anybody at Rockstar Games I don't see anything in the game like GTA 5 or their updates to know when it's coming out I have no clue I know as much as anybody else does that has seen the leak videos the leak videos are amazing because there's a lot of things I see about the game that I can tell if they keep the mechanics in there are going to be very game changing like the sling of the rifle over the character's shoulder tells and then like a duffel bag on their back instead to pull like weapons out tells me that they're going to go the red dead redemption 2 route where you don't just like pull an rpg out of your ass you literally have to carry it on you if you can't carry it on you like you sling it over your shoulder or it's kept in a bag or something like that the reason I say Red Dead Redemption 2, which is made by Rockstar Games 2, is if you played that game, you can carry your six shooters because they're on your belt, but like your rifles and your repeaters, you only carry one of them and a shotgun and you sling them over your two shoulders there. So like if you ever notice, if you're carrying a rifle, for those of you that don't haven't played the game, if you're carrying a rifle and you switch to your um, six shooter, you notice your character will grab the rifle with their left hand and hold it they don't it doesn't just disappear into their ass because they're changing their gun and then they pull out their six shooter with their right hand to kind of make it more realistic which is pretty cool it's not everybody's cup of tea but i definitely like it it's one of those little details that you don't notice but it's pretty cool to see so seeing that in the leak videos i was like okay cool i think they're going to do something similar to that with gta 6. i like the storyline that i'm hearing about it we don't even know if it's true it's just the leak footage but the whole Bonnie and Clyde thing, that's really cool. I love the story of Bonnie and Clyde. It's a great story to uh, learn about and read about. If you have it, it's, it's very entertaining. You should check it out. Um, but yeah, that's what I know about GTA 6. I don't know much. I know just as much as you guys do through leak videos. All right, so the next name, we're gonna just end with uh, YouTube questions here. Uh, next name. Oh man, I cannot pronounce that. It's a Skelly here. Oh, it's probably Skelly from uh, OCRP and uh, my Discord. He's, the Skelly is a uh, a dev that does uh, 3D modeling. He did um he did the let's see he did the 2020 Ford Explorer that we used to use in the OCRP that was like the first uh, vehicle base. He helped out with that with um, HP Desk Chat, for those of you that know who that uh, those two are. Um, he also did the first uh, iteration of the Chevy Tahoe that um, was from HP Desk Chat as well that OCRP had uh, beforehand too. I think it's the uh, 2.0 or 3.0 OCRP vehicle releases. Those two base models were from them. But uh, Skelly says, what keeps you motivated even with these arguably small numbers? So that goes back to what I was saying to my buddy Rocky's question, like starting out. Um, these numbers I know are low to people, but to me, I always look at it as somebody took the time to watch it, even if it was for a couple minutes. Like, and I always look at like each side of the equation so like for an example right now i'm looking at my analytics i have it's tuesday so if you want to look back at my content um the video that came out right now is the uh zombie one for ready or not and it's uh the meth head ones it's basically the meth head level and i have the zombie mod on and me and my buddies are getting our asses kicked basically um 
this video is up there it has uh right now as of this uh recording it has 419 views which is quite a bit for my channel um for a video especially on the first day that it released i don't think there's only one other video that tops it right now which is a lspdfr video which i'm surprised again usually i don't know how and why but police simulator videos usually top everything else in fact it's about to top a police simulator video or no it did already okay um but the average view duration is under two minutes so that's a lot of somebody clicked on it sat there for a few seconds and was like now nah, I'm, I'm not gonna watch this and clicked off or i'm gonna watch this later so like yeah the average view duration isn't high but there's a lot of views and the impression click-through rate which is basically how it's being seen and how it's trending is is up there compared to some of my other videos now like if you see something that's on the smaller side like to, to give an example like pc building simulator content is on the lower side of my channel i'll be lucky if i grace like 50 to 80 views a video which is fine i don't care that's kind of look on the lower side compared to 419 right now which is pretty much on the high side but i don't know who uh, of those people that watch that series like they stay around for 10 to 15 minutes like they most of them watch the entire video so like that's why when i see something with lower views like that i don't look at the views i look at the overall analytics yeah it has lower views but people stay and watch that content longer it makes me realize that yeah not everybody wants to watch this but the people that do really want to watch it and take the time to watch it so like stuff like that like i don't ever let views the view numbers average view durations the impressions subscriber counts anything like that like i don't pay like those numbers they're whatever to me i i do i play the games i want to play i record the games i want to record which is pretty much everything <laughs> that i play and i just enjoy doing what i'm doing and if people don't want to watch it that's fine it's okay i i'm in a very weird niche of a channel i play video games i am not dedicated to a specific video game so they can't say like this is an lspdfr channel or it's a police simulator channel or it's a ready or not channel or first person shooter channel or a game review channel it's nothing like that it's just me playing video games it's just it's literally a blog it's just it's just me playing a video game narrating what i'm doing if it's like ats or like in this case microsoft flight simulator i'm just answering questions or blogging basically and or vlogging i guess um while i'm doing it so it's not really a specific niche that it falls into so like numbers like w again for the success like don't ever pay attention to the numbers and just go and get discouraged by it it's not gonna be the it's not gonna shoot you like you're not going to shoot up to the top overnight. You're not going to do it within a week, two weeks, months, years. Like it might take a while. Just don't let something like that discourage you. Um, when I see, like I said, when I see smaller numbers, I don't let it discourage me. Like I'll, another one I can list off here that is actually on the lower side all around is like car mechanic simulator. I have the last one I put out here, which is a story mission, which they typically do far less as far as um views and uh watch time is concerned compared to uh the ones that have a modded vehicle in it this one has 90 views in it which is pretty good for that and let's see the average view duration though is six minutes and two seconds which is really it's pretty good actually compared to like some of my other stuff that i release where it gets lots of views but not a lot of people stay to watch all of it so like it's give and take you kind of have to look at it that way don't ever look at something as like uh, when they're like if you want to say they're smaller numbers because there's there's really no number that you could just say i'm satisfied with that number you always want more uh, like and then when you're doing this like some vid videos will do really good and then there's other videos that just like get sent off and are just unbelievable which is the video that got you guys here it's i'll list it right now it's still my top video right now it's called getting some backup and police simulator it was the first patrol i did with my buddy jason it's the first time i did a, p a multiplayer patrol it's just to give you some ideas here it has 146,000 views and it's been released since february and this is and what's today june june 13th so it's been out for quite a few months and it has almost 150,000 views, which is unbelievable. Has, it, 
according to analytics, I've gained 700 and it says 701 now, 701 subscribers off this one video. I don't know what I did differently. I don't know if I used a tag that just like amped it up more. I, I don't know what we did differently, but me and my buddy Jay, I like, I study this video all the time and try to repeat what it did to get to where it's at. But I don't know. I, I, I'm still new to this, so I have no idea what I did differently with this video. I try to use a lot of the same stuff in it, tags, um, titles, verbiage, anything I can to see if that's what triggers it. But when I see something like this, like it's great because it's like, yeah, I got a lot of views out of this video and I never was expecting it to go that high, but you just, you got to take it for what it is. Sometimes you're not going to make big numbers like this and other days you might have a crazy video that goes viral and freaking what do they say today to the moon or whatever i don't know but it's, at the end of the day like you need to look at your views and just go okay that's what i have for today you can't really look at it and get discouraged you just got to say okay what can i do differently and that's the other thing too i always try to improve like my views have improved because like i said jeff has taught me a lot and he's helped me a lot, especially with my audio. Like I know ever since my audio has been improved, like this RE 20 microphone I have now with the go XLR and then Jeff helping me set it up too. I've seen my views change dramatically just from my audio being adjusted. And then when I started doing like I did a test while I was at work last Sunday, I had a little bit of a break. I did a test with some of my thumbnails on some of my older videos, like for American Truck Simulator. Didn't tell anybody, didn't say anything to anybody. I just changed the thumbnail to something that was a little more vibrant because I, I keep thumbnails, I keep screenshots. I like to go back and change them or look at them again and whatnot and revisit them. But like some of the ones that didn't do so good, I changed them. And I noticed I gained a view or two out of it. And I'm like, just from a simple change like that has increased a, the viewership of that video. So like just little things like that as you improve always always try to look at stuff that like helps you ex like achieve what you're trying to get towards and then go to the other stuff that didn't get you as much attention and see what you could do differently or what you can change never be discouraged by the numbers that you that you have never never focus on them like never focus on views never focus on revenue don't focus on impression click-through rates or average view duration if you're doing that again, it's the whole mindset of I need to do this because I want to be a famous YouTuber instead of I'm doing this just to have fun. And that's how, that's how I, uh, I combat that. If I have like a lower viewership in the eyes of others, I just, if I got 10 views on a video in an entire day or in the entire video's life, I, I don't care. It, it is what it is. I only got 10. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but you know what? Maybe a year down the road, somebody or a group of people are going to be like, yeah, I love this. And they're like, oh, look at this. This guy did this a year ago. And they click on it, and then all of a sudden it's there. And people are viewing it. So, again, don't ever let numbers discourage you. If they're smaller, then they're not where you want them to be as views or, or any of those things. Just do it because you enjoy doing it. If you even get just one view, I mean, that's one more view than you thought you'd have. Right? So, there you go. Just go into it with that mindset. Uh, let's see. Last question I got here is from Mike. Did you? Okay. I'm not even going to try to pronounce if that is your last name. We're going to say Mike D. Mike D.A. Uh, his question says, Thero, where did you learn to develop mod scripts for games? Um, honestly, I learned on just trial and error for GTA. I'm assuming you mean GTA 5 because... I don't really make mods or scripts for any other game other than GTA 5. I made sort of a scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator for Jeff. Me and him kind of partnered on it to try to learn. And I kind of got it down, but I, I would definitely not be able to do it. It was like a two, one or two week thing that we tried doing. We got it to work in the end, but it wasn't perfect and I'll never, I don't think I'll ever go back to it because it was tough having to learn Blender. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as like GTA 5 is concerned, learned all this stuff through just trial and error. Um, there was a lot of people will come to my Discord and they'll like ask questions and I'll try to answer them. Not all the time will I answer. I ain't gonna lie. I see all of them, but I don't answer all of them because some of them, if you scroll up, you could find your answer right there in like the uh, 
uh, Z modeler question section is typically one of the uh, ones that gets it or the GTA 5 support questions. But um, I did reach out and I got a little bit of help from a developer. He goes by the name of Lundy. He, um, he started, I don't know if he still does anything on modding forms, but he kind of started moddingform.com for uh, GTA 5. Which is uh, where I get a lot of my assets for um, GTA 5. There's a lot of like really nice things on there. So if you're, if you're a vehicle dev, definitely check out that form if you don't check it out already. Because there's a lot of great things on there uh, that you can pick up. But uh, he helped me out a little bit with things. that I kept reaching out to him like, hey, how do you do this? How do you do this? And then after a while, I think he got annoyed with me and he stopped talking to me. <laughs> so he kind of just was like, okay, I'm done. I helped you out enough. So... Uh, I had to stop using him as a crutch and started trying to learn things. So like over the years, it was just trial and error. Like I'm like, okay, let me put this on. Oh, this isn't working. Okay, let me try this. Ah, that didn't fix it. Let me try this. And then eventually you would get in and go, okay, now I learned something new. Um, for those wondering, I've been using Z Modeler 3 ever since it was created. I came from Z Modeler 2, which was free. Yeah, at least it was at the time. I don't think it is anymore. If, even if it is available anymore. For uh, GTA 4 and... God, what year was that? I think that was 2010? Yeah, I think so. Uh, maybe not that long ago. Let's see, when did I discover these guys? I found Bugs, Jeff, and um, Zach in 2012 i want to say or 2013 is when i found their channels and i started doing z modeler shortly after that so yeah it's probably been about 10 or 11 years that i've been using it and i mean when you have that much time and experience into it that's that's what helps you like learn how to do uh mods and whatnot a lot of the stuff I learned too, like when I do um, vehicle mods for Civ cars for OCRP, like a lot of people ask me about the window stickers and whatnot. This is literally just a mod that all you do is when you click the mod on, it turns that off and it puts a license plate on the rear bumper. And that stuff I learned through um, Rockstar, basically. I would look at one of their vehicles, like the, the Lowrider DLC, and I'm like, okay, how did they get these to link? And I'm like, oh, this is how they do it. Oh, and then you could do this with collisions. Oh, and then you could do this where you change this mod and it'll change all the doors and you don't have to just do individual ones. Like, it's just been trial and error. Um, but yeah, that's how I how I learned that stuff. Um, again, just trial and error. Lots of experience with it. I don't, I'm not claiming that I know everything with Z Modeler. I know, like, maybe 25% worth of the program. There is so much you can do with it. Um... Oh, uh, excuse me. I'm not used to having to talk for such a long time in succession without like a little bit of a break. But, um, yeah, that's just, uh, that's just where, that's where I got the experience from and how I learned that stuff is just trial and error and looking at Rockstar stuff and just, uh, mimicking theirs and, uh, trying to use it for my own benefit. Like some of the stuff, like obviously like when you go to tearing off the the window sticker and replace the rear license plate with an actual license plate. I forget which of the two mods it is. I think it's the arch mod. So it's like what they use for arches, like fender flares on cars in GTA online. For me, it's used as a, um, as a window sticker removal thing. So I just used it for my own benefit to something else, basically. Um, but yeah. That's how I've uh, learned how to do mods. That's how I've learned how to do vehicle dev stuff for GTA 5. And like I said, if you're in my Discord, I typically try to answer, but if there's some things that I see and I'm like, that's already been answered, I'm not going to answer it again. You just have to search for it, man. There's there's a search bar in Discord. It'll, it'll You just type in a little bit of the wordage or the verbiage you need and then like it'll come up you can click on it and then you can kind of see the thread and see uh usually get the answer to your uh, question there there's some things that i'll go back and answer though depending on uh if i'm bored at work or something but uh yeah that is uh 
that's pretty much all the questions I have here. Yep, I don't think I see any others. There wasn't any more on Twitter. I didn't have any on Facebook. And Instagram didn't have any either, although I didn't really say anything on there. And then, yeah, that's all of it for YouTube. All right, so, um, yeah, I'm glad it, uh, you guys submitted your questions. Appreciate it a lot. Glad you got to learn a little bit more about me. Um, I hope, like, with some of the questions, like, how to, like, start your own channel. Again, I'm new to this. This is all new to me, getting to 5,000 subscribers. Never thought that would have happened to me. Like, I was... Like I said, I set off with the goal, like if I could get 10 subscribers, then my next goal was like a hundred subscribers. And then next goal was like 500, then a thousand, then 2000, now 5,000. Next is going to probably be 10,000. Like I set small increment goals to achieve a bigger goal. And that, that's how I, how I, I stay motivated. That's how, what drives me to want to make more content as well as the fun that it brings in my life being able to do this as like a little side hobby thing i think right now i wanted to do this video earlier but i just wanted to make sure we were a little more established on the 5000 it wasn't just a bunch of people clicking in like a bunch of bots and then they'd all unsubscribe but we're sitting at 5381 as as of this recording so hopefully if the bots get kicked off youtube it's not going to drop me under 5000 but you never know <laughs> But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, end the questions there. Again, appreciate all of you guys for um, asking the questions and taking the time to do it. Um, appreciate you guys for being here and subscribing. <coughs> um, a few people have asked, like, how do you promote my channel, my videos, what, whatever you want to try to promote. Biggest thing I see is, as far as what I've read anyways, is thumbnail, uh, uh, not thumbnails. <laughs> That's, that's my job is to create thumbnails, but, um, thumbs, the thumbs up, basically I'm never going to, I mean, I, I might do it once in a while, but I'll try not to be so cringy with it, but, um, leaving a like on a video helps boost it up. Um, leaving comments that helps boost it up too, because I always engage with everybody on the channel too. If you leave a comment, I always try to write something to you at the very least. I'll always heart. Well, not always, but I'll try to always heart. Um, your comment as well just to indicate like i read it um but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and uh cut a lot of this video out because again this is a two hour and 30 minute flight and it crashed a little bit in the middle of the flight and at the end of it <coughs> but i'm gonna take you towards the end here you can see the uh the uh <laughs> crazy flying that it took place afterwards and uh i do mean crazy oh so, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out to this next point. All right. So we're at the next point right here. And so to go over what's going on right now, my game has crashed. I just spawned in within like the, the, uh, uh, range I was at from the airport that I'm flying into right now. And when I did that, um, I have to, reinsert my flight plan so i'm flying right now i'm in midair at whatever elevation that they put me at or at altitude or however sorry i'm no avionics i'm not an aviation expert i have no idea what i'm doing when it comes to this so if it doesn't look legit educate me Con leave a comment down below and educate me because i i always love learning new things especially with um with microsoft flight simulator but as you're going to see here, I'm going to put in the information for the landing, the arrival, the uh, runway I want to land on. And I don't even know where the airport's at to the very end of this thing. But um, once I start getting some stuff in, all of a sudden you start to hear it say like 500 feet, like I'm landing and I look up, literally priceless moment. I'm just like, that's a mountain and I'm about to die. <laughs> in fact, um, it should be coming up here pretty soon. Again, I'm watching this as this is happening. Yeah, it should be coming up here. Yeah, I go, oh, and then you can see me like almost stalling. Because <laughs> I'm just scared for my life. I'm like, I'm about to fly into a mountain. 
And then I, yeah, I go on outside view a lot because it's one, I like to like showcase the scenery of where I'm flying at. And then two, um, especially when I'm not in like flying to El Paso or down here, it's nice to see some actual greenery instead of just dirt and desert here. But yeah, almost flew into a mountain, was pretty eventful on the flight, kind of just like, oh. <laughs> And then I'm looking off to my left because the airport is off to my left somewhere, but I can't see it. And it's hard to tell, especially at the time of day. When I fly, I fly, um, the day that I fly is random. I post it in a section of my Discord that um, I have marked for specific roles for people to uh, get kind of the schedule if they want to tag along or just hang out with me and um, fly along with me. Um, but if you guys ever want to, tag along and you happen to see I'm online I I have that tail number is my call number there the SCT SCT 114 which I know is not legit but hey it's what I wanted so Calthero and then my unit number I usually use 114 no it's not legit for aviation but I like to use it it's easy to identify me with that I'm always flying this livery too the black and gray livery I wanted to keep it the same livery for a little bit of the realism for this series but I fly on the the uh, US West uh, servers and I will always depart where I end in the last uh, leg of this series so like I'm gonna be ending uh, in still still I, I don't know how to pronounce it but I'm gonna be landing here the next flight I'm going to do is actually gonna be shortly after this video it's actually gonna be like a day or two after this video I'm gonna I'm recording this on Tuesday uh, I'm gonna fly again on Friday and we're gonna fly to my first de destination that I want to get to which is uh, Mexico City, which will be pretty cool to fly into but Yeah, just kind of looking around right now. I'm gonna go ahead and speed ahead here a little bit for the uh, flight So right now I'm trying to line up what I think is the runway that the actually it's at the two hour and 45 uh, minute mark on my uh video here but again i'm gonna cut a lot of it out so you guys aren't gonna be here for two hours and 45 minutes and that doesn't account for like i left the recording going even after the game crashed so there's probably like 20 minutes 30 minutes of probably eh, more or less like 15 to 20 minutes of the game crashing out to me reloading the sim refinding a spot to spawn at and then like the arrival airport and trying to get everything set up so uh, right now I'm zooming in. I think I see the runway. <laughs> I, it's great because I recorded this a few days ago so I could kind of go over my thoughts of what was going on at the time. So I think I see the runway. I am not lined up at all for the runway. When I go to land, spoiler alert, it's not pretty either. <laughs> I land like all over the left side of the runway. I'm not center. Um, it's typically for, I want to say it's for commercial airliners that land here. I could be wrong. But a, a little plane like mine, my little Baron G58, is not going to have a problem landing on the runway. It's got plenty of space. I know you should be center line, but again, I'm not good at this. I'm still new at this. I'm flying with a Xbox One controller on my PC. So like, yeah, and I just stalled in the video here while I'm watching it. But um, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely new to me anyways but it's a lot of fun i enjoy doing it um by the time this video comes out i have already watched the trailer for the uh, new microsoft flight simulator for 2024 looks absolutely amazing i love the fact that they're going to do missions to get people more objectives on what to do in the flight sim instead of just flying point a to point b that'll be a lot of fun so definitely looking forward to learn more about that and picking that up that might actually change this series from just uh flight sim 2020 to a 2024 as well if i do pick that up so i'm gonna touch down here shortly i'm over the numbers i'm in the markers right now i have a little bit of a flare it's not perfect but i do touch down i don't bounce down the runway my game hiccups a little bit here but once i get to the end of the runway and i start to taxi that's when my game crashes again unfortunately I've been told, like it says it's a graphics thing, and you guys can let me know in the comments below what it might be the problem is uh, with that. But I've been told it's due to possibly GPU overclocking, which I don't know how to do and I don't do. 
or overheating, which I'm liquid liquid cool, so I know it's not overheating. But I've also been told it's by a driver issue with NVIDIA, so I've rolled back my driver for the next flight to see if that fixes it. And then uh, we'll go from there and see. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching this video. Again, thank you to everybody that's been subscribing and viewing. It's been a blast seeing the numbers climb and just seeing the great feedback I've been getting from all of you guys. It's a truly unbelievable feeling to that you just can't put into words. It's just crazy to have. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. And until next time, take care.